let's pause. I'll throw it to Hannah for a question. Your story is incredible and you seem to maintain such a positive attitude and seems like you see yourself as a survivor and not a victim despite what you've been through. You are inspiring. What's your advice for people who are out there struggling with physical and or mental health challenges? Yeah, absolutely. I um I thank you for saying that. That makes, you know, my heart happy. I like to see myself as someone who is indeed, um, you know, an eternal optimist. I, I'm definitely, I hope you can hear, I'm also not just a Pollyanna cheerleader, right? Like we have to call out the hard things and talk about the hard things. And, and so for people who are out there dealing with their own medical challenges, be it physical, be it an invisible illness, be it a mental health um, issue, I think the most important thing is to remind yourself that you're not alone, right? I see you. Jeremy sees you. IABA sees you. Um, and it's about taking care of yourself every day. So if that means that all you can do is get out of bed, take a shower, you know, and sit on the couch, then by gosh, that's what I want you to do, right? Do what you can um, with what you have. And where there are gaps, make some effort if you can, right, to reach out and to find those resources. You know, connecting with someone in your local neighborhood, your community. But I think that comes on all of my healthy friends, all of my healthy veterans, right? Take the time to reach out. Um, if someone fell off the net who was wounded, ill, or injured, or had a rough transition, you got to take the time to reach out. Um, because when you're dealing with an illness or an injury or a wound, that's your number one responsibility. When we start piling, you know, administrative, bureaucratic nonsense on top of people who are hurting, that's where we end up with problems. So try to... Um, give some of that burden, right, to other people if you need to. And if you're someone that can put some of that on your plate for a fellow veteran or service member, then please, by all means, you know, do that. Um, I think for those who are struggling, you know, and maybe you feel alone and, and you're dealing with your issue, like, answer the question, what gives my life meaning? What gives my life meaning, right? I still can't read or write. I'm looking right at you guys right now. I can't read or write very well. I have major autonomic nervous system problems. I have a balance deficit because the infection ended up on my brainstem and there's a scar there and it causes issues that just aren't gonna go away, right? I didn't ask to be sick. You didn't ask to be sick, okay? This is not your fault. You don't need to blame yourself for anything. So remove all of that, okay? And I think ask yourself, what really gives your life meaning? You know, to me, it's honestly my kids. And I live every day in pain, dealing with an invisible illness for them, right? There's a higher something in each one of us that has to pull you through the day-to-day -day kind of suffering, because that's really what it is, you know, the illness or the injury that you're experiencing. So be able to answer that question. If you can't, you know, after we're done here today, close your eyes, lay on the couch, go outside, you know, and think about that. Um, what gives my life meaning? What is my purpose now? I felt really sorry for myself the day I was medically retired. I laid in bed and I'm like, what? Like no ceremony. I had this great career. Now no one's going to hire me, right? I, I lost my identity as an officer. I lost my profession as a pilot. I lost my means for providing for my family. I get kicked to the turb and told good luck, right? Sorry about your, all your complex, you know, needs. Good luck with that. And I was really upset and it hurt. You know, I felt abandoned and betrayed, but I had to turn that around. The question is, what can I do with what I have? I regained my ability to speak, much to the chagrin of the DOD and the VA sometimes, God bless them, you know, but this is what I do. Give voice to the voiceless, share your story. And the thing I remind myself at my worst moments, because I still have those moments, is I say, Nicole, just like in flying, the runway behind you is always unusable. All you ever have is the runway in front of you. Don't go back. You didn't do anything to ask for or deserve your wound, your illness, or your injury. It's not your fault. Move forward. Sorry. That's a, no. <laughs> to all y'all out there. 